A multiple picture entry of a story, series, or sequence of a spot or general news event. So this is just single photographer news picture story. Okay. Past due. Lucas Metropolitan Housing is among the city's top landlords when it comes to eviction filings. Kytrell Brown, 40, had tried in court to fight her eviction from public housing, but she couldn't gather all the documents she needed in time to prove the lights and gas were back in her name. The judge sided with Lucas Metropolitan Housing after the public housing authority said she failed to maintain the utilities owed $46.50 in maintenance costs and failed to fill out paperwork recertifying her for public housing. Brown was evicted with her son before evictions for non-payment of rent were paused March 27, 2020. 37% of the non-payment cases were filed for less than $100 owed. These families who have been passed on rent would have been evicted. The pandemic with the public housing moratorium saved them from homelessness. While homeschooling and trying to make ends meet, LMHA families are constantly worried about the end of the moratorium. Story two. BLM. Following the death of George Floyd in Minneapolis, several weeks of Black Lives Matter racial protests spilled into the streets of Columbus, Ohio. With the Ohio State House at the epicenter, the largely peaceful group of protesters blocked streets and marched in large groups throughout downtown several miles each day. Police used tear gas and non lethal projectiles to disperse the protesters on several occasions. Story three. COVID-19 impacts daily life. Little did we know how different our lives would become when COVID-19 first became a problem in the middle of March. The pandemic affected all aspects of daily life from grocery shopping to church services. Eventually a vaccine became available by the end of the year, though not after thousands of deaths and a new way of life for most Ohioans. Next one. Child care closings. Action for children determined nearly a quarter of child care providers will face closures by January 2021 due to the coronavirus pandemic. For two thirds of providers, monthly revenue does not cover expenses. Enrollment is depressed at 54% of total, of total capacity and nearly one third of centers are experiencing staff shortages. COVID church. COVID church. With noticeable amounts of hand sanitizer available for parishioners, Mount Olivet Baptist Church hosted its last service on Sunday, March 15th, 2020, due to the coronavirus pandemic. The church's public assistance ministries will remain open, but future services will be live streamed. A return to in-person services will depend on the duration of Ohio's shutdown. BLM. BLM. This one had no summary, but the first caption is artist Hakeem Callwood paints raised fists as part of a mural in the Milo Grogan neighborhood of Columbus on November 8th. The Maroon Arts Group and the Greater Columbus Arts Council teamed up to create six permanent murals around the city of Columbus as part of the Delivering Black Dreams campaign.
COVID ward. COVID ward. ICU nurse Kyle Day attends to his 25-year-old patient, Kayla Anderson, inside the COVID-19 ward of Mount Carmel Grove City Hospital. Anderson is one of two patients under Day's care during his shift. The current ratio for nurses in the Grove City ICU is 2 to 1, but there have been times during the pandemic when that patient-to-nurse ratio has reached 3 to 1. Floyd protests. George Floyd protests. Following the police killing of George Floyd in Minneapolis, protests erupted across the globe, calling for an end to police brutality and for racial justice. In Columbus, Ohio, protesters came downtown in the days after Floyd's death, pleading for accountability and demanding change from the local police department, which has had several police-involved shootings of Black men. Tear gas and flashbangs were common in the first few days of the protest as police attempted to disperse crowds from the streets. The crowds continued to grow and remained largely peaceful in the weeks that followed as protesters worked for change. Nakia Crawford. Friends and family of Nakia Crawford gather in the middle of West North Street for a candlelight vigil at the spot where she was shot and killed in a drive-by shooting Monday, June 15, 2020 in Akron, Ohio. Protest, rural protest. Protests in rural Ohio. Protesters marched through the streets of Mount Vernon, Ohio on June 1st, 2020. A group of college students organized the event to stand in solidarity with other protests across the nation spurred by the death of George Floyd in Minneapolis. Far from the industrial North's urban centers, hundreds of protests have cropped up in small cities in rural areas. Life locked up. The Coshocton County Jail is the second least compliant jail in the state of Ohio. The jail, which was built in 1972, was originally built to house 65 inmates. When the state of Ohio implemented their code system, it was determined only 15 inmates could safely be housed in the jail. Today, there are usually around 80 inmates and as many as 90 serving their time in the building. There are little to no social services offered in the jail. The classroom space has been converted into filing space. The former rec room now holds 10 cots for inmates to sleep on. Others are crammed into extra rooms. At-risk inmates can be held and receiving for their entire time incarcerated. The legal limit is 12 hours. Fights are commonplace and the guards have been attacked eight times. The county has been pursuing a new jail for several years, including seeking help from officials at the state level. Commissioners have often said the current Justice Center is the biggest liability to the county and the Justice Center building is considered the worst in the state by the Department of Rehabilitation and Corrections. Nurses go on lockdown. Nurses go on lockdown with residents. At noon on March 12th, two Licking County assisted living facilities closed their doors to the outside world for the sake of the 220 vulnerable residents within. They'd been preparing for the stay for three weeks, enlisting staff who would be willing to commit to 24 7 service for as long as the COVID 19 period of isolation would last. No one knew how long. The staff moved into any spare room, slept on air mattresses and offices, and only saw loved ones through a phone screen for 65 days. The staff was committed and did not leave the assisted living facility for those long months. No one entered the buildings, no one left, and it worked. The staff kept the coronavirus from infecting patients while they were locked inside. Every photo was taken from outside the facilities, looking through the glass into the safe haven the nurses and aides created for the residents. Todd's guns.
Todd's guns. Todd Bruning, Bedford School's school board member, has been criticized for social media posts that have been described to be anti-Muslim, anti-LGBTQ, misogynistic, and racist. Black Lives Matter and other community members have called for Mr. Bruning's removal or resignation. A group of demonstrators who have been affiliated with the Black Lives Matter movement in Toledo following the death of George Floyd brought their efforts north of the Ohio-Michigan state line. Demonstrators marched nearly one mile to the intersection of Secor Road and Summerfield Road, where they were confronted by supporters of Mr. Bruning outside of his business, Todd's Guns. While the protests remained largely peaceful, Monroe County Sheriff Swat took to the streets to de-escalate a brief encounter between demonstrators and supporters of Mr. Bruning. Mr. Bruning is still a member of the school board. COVID Toledo. COVID-19 daily life in Toledo. Much like the rest of the world and country, Toledo area residents quickly had to adapt their everyday lives around the coronavirus pandemic. BLM. BLM protest. Thousands of protesters marched north on Vine Street and over the Rhine on Sunday, June 7th, 2020. It was the 10th day of protest in response to the death of George Floyd in Minneapolis. Floyd died after being handcuffed and pinned to the ground by a police officer's knee. After George Floyd's death in late May, protests and civil unrest unfolded across the country. Tate. Julius Tate Vigil. On December 7th, 2018, Julius Tate Jr. was shot five times by the Columbus police during a robbery sting. His girlfriend, Masonique Saunders, was charged with murder as his accomplice. In May 2019, Saunders pleaded guilty to involuntary manslaughter and aggravated robbery. Tate's family organized 16 days worth of protests this fall, one for each year of Tate's life, and gathered near the intersection where he was killed on December 7th, 2020, the second anniversary of his death. Okay. So I'm going to go back to the beginning, um, and I'm going to have you guys vote. We're going to do one. one. Um, and then we'll just we'll just go off of the contact sheet this first round, um, and see where we where we get from there. Sound good? Okay. It's out. 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 Oh, in, sorry. Out. 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 In. Out. 
¿Bien? Out. Out. In. In. Out. Out. In. Um, that's six. What are we constructing? What? Say that again. Well, uh, is there, what do you feel strongly about? Which ones? Do oh, you like? I think by far the strongest one is the life locked up, not just because of the access of that, because most of these moments are pretty powerful to me. I, I love the, uh, obviously we liked the haircut one. I really like that photo of the, the girl looking through like the, whatever you want to call it, little food yeah. passing thing. Um, this woman that's uh, number nine, um, you know, what a video chatting with family or, or, or lawyers or something like that. Um, the guy is playing chess or checkers. I mean, I just, a lot of these are really great moments and um, tell, tell a pretty good story of what it's like to be living in this place, I think. favorite what else do we like If you need extra captions, just let me know. I assume we're probably all in some, I think we're probably all in agreement about life locked up, yeah. uh, not to speak for you, Nate, but uh, can we see the rest of them large other than this one, that one? Large is in just slideshow form? Yeah, slideshow or just yeah. toggle through them. I'm finding slideshows a little bit easier for this Zoom setup.
How do you guys feel about the um, the nurses? Well, I thought that was kind of interesting, photographing everything from through the window or outside. Um, It's not an easy endeavor, especially given, you know, no access. Um, I think there, there are some, some weaker images, but having said that, you know, like on, on the whole, I think there, there are plenty of moments and. Kind of like, yeah, I kind of like this one. And as far as the protest ones go, I think I like the Floyd protests um, just had some stronger moments and a little more like variety of images. Number six was super powerful in that, but. Lisa, what do you think? Mm, I like all of those that I like the uh, nursing home residents. I just think that's a really unique story and really hard to do. Um, and the photographer did a great job with, with what they had to work with. Um, and I agree on the Floyd protest. I think that's probably the strongest. Um, I also like the... An, the COVID one uh, right there. I mean, I don't like some of the images that we talked about in another essay, but I think it's pretty good, well-rounded coverage of, it shows a lot of different aspects to it and some thoughtful photographs. But I would say my favorites are probably life locked up, Floyd protests and lockdown with residents. Yeah, I agree with that. Could, could we look at the, the other um, Black Lives Matter collection? I think the last one. I think this would be my fourth. Yeah, these, <clears throat> there's some of these images that I don't think are as strong as that other, as the other uh, George Floyd. Um, I think there's some decent images in the COVID ward one, but it, it, a lot of them are repetitive and yeah. it almost seems like, and then obviously not photographer's fault if they're like, okay, we'll give you half an hour to like come in. You can only photograph this one patient. So there's like, it just seems like there's two photos of that anonymous patient and then so, you know, not the photographer's fault, but I don't, I'm not sure it really holds up as a, a news story. Do we want to lose that one? Let it hang around for a bit? I could, I could lose that one. Yeah, I think this one in the, the, the COVID one, I feel similarly about like they're really strong frames, but actually I think this is more well-rounded, but. Yeah. yeah, I could lose those, both of those. I mean, they, they all have some really strong images, but um, I don't think enough to really keep it in. Although I do, I mean, the efforts on both of the photographers by, or one photographer, I don't know, one might have photographed both, um, was definitely, they, you can tell they worked really hard and tried to make the most out of every situation. Yeah. But a lot of these situations are, as we know, just not that visual. So we could lose these last two then, or just yeah. honorable mention, lose them. Yeah. Nate's nodding. <laughs> I think. Okay. 
I I think this collection of images I like more than the other Floyd protests. I mean, I, like in the other folder, image six is, you know, one of the most powerful images that we've seen probably from, you know, protest coverage. But as a group of images, I think I lean towards the, the last folder, this one, but I'm open to be sweaty to talk about it a little. I think this one's a little repetitive. I don't know. Oh, what I like about Floyd protests is that if I feel like it's much more about the people and mm -hmm. the movement rather and and I think there's really strong images in it, but I get a sense of being more like in the movement. And then the other one I feel like is much more about the police involvement, which you know, I'm not saying is better or worse necessarily. I'm just more just different attracted to the Floyd protests I become more emotionally involved in. You want to look at them big again? I, I mean, I'm, I think I've made up my mind that I like the yeah. Floyd protest better. 2v1. It's all good. <laughs> Uh, so are those first places yep. locked up? Second place, are we thinking nurses or? I think that one. The protests? Mm-hmm. Nate? I think so. Yeah. Lisa, you good with that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. I do really then, like the nurses too, but I, do, I think that's really strong coverage of the protests. So I like that. And then this one is an honorable mention? Yeah. Okay. Definitely. Good.